On this side, I have the Blackmagic ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. And on this side, the new Blackmagic ATEM Television Studio HD8 ISO. Both two fantastic desktop video switchers, but is this one really worth $2,000 more than this one? What are some of the features that you get in this that you don't get with that? And why might you choose one over the other? All of those questions answered and more in today's video, so let's get straight into it. Starting off then with the physical specs and ports, and just to make things a little easier for this video, when I'm referring to this model, I'm gonna call it the ATEM TVS. And when I'm talking about this model, it's gonna be the ATEM SDI. Both of these models have eight SDI inputs and they fully support up to 1080p 60 frames per second. And also they're full standards converted as well. So you can mix and match different frame rates and resolutions. Blackmagic has also recently announced a 4K, although non-ISO version of the ATEM Television Studio. And that comes with eight 12G SDI inputs for full Ultra HD workflows. Now I'm gonna focus this video primarily on the two HD ISO models in front of me, especially as the 4K version isn't released until later on this year and it doesn't support ISO recording. They both also have two USB ports on the back for connecting external SSDs for recording or connecting up to a computer for use with things like Zoom, Teams or other video based apps. And they both have gigabit ethernet built in as well with one port in the ATEM SDI and four ports in the back of the ATEM Television Studio. And we'll talk a little bit later on in this video about what you might want to use those four ports for because there's some really cool features built into this. So those are pretty much the similarities when it comes to the physicalities of these two devices. Now let's talk about some of the differences. Firstly, video outputs. The ATEM SDI Extreme ISO has four configurable AUX outputs. The ATEM Television Studio, on the other hand, has a total of 12 SDI outputs, but only two of those are configurable AUXs. It then has a dedicated multi-view SDI, a dedicated program output SDI, and eight fixed camera returns that send program back to the cameras for your talkback, tally light, and camera control. Now, I personally would have liked to have seen those eight camera returns instead be eight AUX outputs, like Blackmagic has actually done on the new 4K model of the A10 television studio. That would give you extra flexibility and the choice to send other feeds out of them if you don't need to use them for camera returns. One really great thing the A10 TVS has that the SDI doesn't is a dedicated HDMI output on the back for multi-view. Now, as most TVs and computer monitors are HDMI based rather than SDI, it's really convenient having HDMI built into this saving you having to use an external converter. My one request here though, would be to make this HDMI output an AUX output rather than just a dedicated multi-view output, because I really miss being able to, like I do on my A10 mini, switching between the multi-view or a dedicated camera input or the program output full screen so that I can check that everything is in focus. Next, let's talk about getting audio into these devices. And for the ATEM SDI, there's two main options. The first is you've got two stereo mini jacks on the back labeled mic one and mic two for bringing in analog audio. The second option is down through the SDI. So you can actually pass audio from the camera to the switcher through the SDI ports. In comparison, the ATEM TVS actually has five ways of bringing audio into it. You've got the SDI method I just mentioned here. You've got two balanced XLR connectors on the back for bringing in analog audio, maybe from an external mixer, for example. You've got an RCA stereo jack on the back, so you can plug that into your iPhone or bring in other stereo sources. You've also got MADI in, which allows you to bring in 32 channels of digital audio. And you've got a five pin talkback connector on the back so that you can connect your talkback microphone and headset. And you can actually use that talkback microphone, not just for talking to your cameras or your engineers, but also on air as well. So you could use it in game commentary, for example. For audio outputs, if we look at the ATEM SDI, really the only way to get audio out of it is via the headphone jack on the back. The ATEM TVS, on the other hand, again gives a lot more flexibility. Firstly, you have the MADI out, which allows you to output 64 channels of digital audio, although the ATEM TVS only allows 50 of those outputs to be active at any one time. Then you have four quarter inch jacks on the back and they're actually split into pairs, so you can have separate studio and control room speaker outputs. And of course, you have the five pin XLR talkback connector where you can send both program output audio and talkback audio into your headset. Speaking of talkback, the ATEM SDI model doesn't support it. It supports tally light, camera control, and remote record triggering, but not talkback. 
It is supported by the ATEM TVS, however, giving you a two-way connection between you and your camera operators. The ATEM TVS model also features dedicated timecode and reference input and output BNCs. These features are crucial in larger, more traditional broadcast environments where precise frame synchronization between cameras and other connected devices are absolutely essential. Now, I've got to mention this. One big difference that you'll notice straight away between these two devices is the size and the front panels. The ATEM SDI is smaller and almost five times lighter, making it perfect for portable setups. And while its front panel gives you some control, you still do need to use the ATEM software control to get the absolute most out of it. On the other hand, the ATEM TVS is designed to be an all-in-one powerhouse. I'd say you can control about 95% of its functions from the front panel itself. I've only actually had to dive into the software when using this to do things like adding a stream key or changing the multi-view layout. The panel has everything that you could possibly need for controlling a show, and the three digital displays on the front make it really easy for doing things like navigating through menus, changing settings, and even customizing your button layouts or labels, something you can't do on the ATEM SDI because everything is printed on it. There's even a physical T-bar as well. Finally, one key physical difference is actually something you can't see from the outside, and that is storage. Both units do have two USB-C ports on the back for connecting external SSDs for recording, but the ATEM TVS also has the ability for internal storage too. It features an M.2 slot, allowing you to install flash media directly into the device and then record straight to the TVS. And I'm gonna go into this new internal storage in just a few minutes because there's a lot more to it than that. And I think this feature alone would probably convince me to buy this model over this model and I want to share with you why. But I also do want to mention that at the time of recording this video, Blackmagic is still shipping the ATEM Television Studio HD8 ISO with two terabytes worth of internal storage included in the price. And also at the time of recording this video, there is 20% off all Blackmagic ISO products. So if you're thinking about buying one of these units, now might be the time to pull the trigger. Those are the physical differences now let's move on to what features you get with each of these. But before we do, let's talk about live graphics with the sponsor of today's video, Uno Overlays. Uno is the free broadcast quality graphics platform designed for live streamers. It gives you instant access to hundreds of easily customizable graphics templates from lower thirds to sports scoreboards, news tickers, and so much more. Imagine you're live streaming a soccer match, for example, and you wanna display the score on screen. With Uno, it's possible within minutes. Just head over to overlays.uno and sign up for a free account and you'll have access to a wide range of pre-made templates that you can easily filter through until you find the perfect style for your stream. Customizing and controlling your overlay is simple. You can do it right from your web browser on any device, whether it be a computer, phone or tablet. Adjust team names, customize the color scheme to match your brand colors, and even add team logos by pasting a link to their hosted images. Once you're happy with your graphic, getting it into your broadcast is just as easy. Click the copy output URL button and add it as a browser source to your preferred streaming software. Whether you use OBS, Streamlabs, or vMix, for example, Uno seamlessly integrates with your setup. But it doesn't stop there. From anywhere in the world, you can update and control your graphics live, animate your overlays on and off, update scores as they fly in, all from one web page. And if you prefer physical buttons, they've got you covered too, as Uno now offers a free Stream Deck plugin that allows you to control your graphics directly from your Stream Deck device. This is just a small glimpse of the countless number of overlays available on Uno. So if you wanna up the quality of your live broadcast graphics, head over to the link in my description or sign up at overlays.uno. Best of all, it's completely free to use right now and within minutes, you can have high quality animated graphics added to your streams. Plus the team at Uno are always looking for your suggestions and ideas of new templates to be added. So if you think you've got something that you wanna see on the platform, send them a message using the feedback form on their website. I'm back at my desk and I've got the ATEM Television Studio HD8 ISO next to me. And the reason for that is I wanna go into more detail about some of the key features in this fantastic switcher. And we'll start with storage. I mentioned internal storage earlier. This has got two terabytes of internal storage in it. And I wanna show you how that works. I wanna demo it. So first I wanna show here the multi-view of 
the A10 Television Studio HD ISO. And if we look at the ISO recording panel here, you can see under slot number one, it actually says internal. And we've got about six hours or, or almost seven hours of ISO recordings. That's all of the individual cameras and the program output with that two terabyte internal storage. Now, if you look on the back here, there's nothing plugged in the USB-C ports on the back of the device, but I'm gonna hit record and start recording on it now. There we go. And you can see on the multi-view, we are now recording into the internal M.2 flash hard drive. So that's the first thing. You don't have to worry about external drives or carrying around uh, external hard drives to record onto. It's again, all in one unit, but there is more. And that is because you can access that internal hard drive over the network and you can actually have multiple people working off it at the same time. I mentioned that this has got four gigabit ethernet ports in the back and you'll be able to utilize those. This is the first thing that you'll be able to, or, or one of the things that you'll be able to really utilize those for. So let's head over to my Mac here. And um, if you just go, I'm, I'm doing it on Mac, it works on PC as well and Linux. If you go over to the network tab in the Mac, we can see I've actually got my Blackmagic Cloud Store in my studio. I've had it for a while, absolutely love it. But also what's popped up alongside it is the ATEM Television Studio HDA ISO. And if I double click on that to connect to it, if you connect to it for the first time or you're connecting on Windows, it might ask for some credentials. They, they are just username is guest and password is guest. But we now we can see we have access to that internal drive. So if we go in here, we can see we've got the ISO recording that is going on right now on the drive. And I can actually go in here. Now it is worth noting that while you're recording a session, you can't actually be using that those files in an editor and editing at the same time. The Television Studio HDA ISO doesn't have what's called an edit while ingest workflow currently. Although I would say in the future, it's possible it will come to it because that is available on things like select hyperdex, for example, with Blackmagic. So to actually use the file, you have to first stop recording. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So I am gonna stop the recording now. But as soon as I do that, I have access and I can open up any of those files. So in fact, we'll just go into this now. We'll open up the program output, first of all, of what we were just doing. And you can see, here's me talking as I scrub through. Remember, this is all happening over the network. I'm not connected to any hard drive into my Mac or anything like that. It's all happening over a one gigabit connection. I can scrub through perfectly fine here. But let's say we want to take a look also at some of the ISOs that were plugged in. So I only had two cameras plugged into the HDA ISO, but you can see here, there's me hit and record. If we scrub all the way to the back, here's me hit and stop there. And we're accessing those over the network. Now, where it becomes really useful, I'm just going to hit record again here. And you can see it's instantly started creating another uh, recording in the same folder. It's going to double up on the video ISOs as well. But you'll notice we still have full access to that other session that we recorded first. So you can actually have editors accessing your ATEM Television Studio HDA ISO while you're recording another session. They might not be able to record or, or be editing this the session that is recording uh, at the same time. But if you're doing, let's say, five podcasts in a day, you can be recording podcast number two while they're accessing over the network the switcher and starting to edit podcast number one. I hope that makes sense and you're able to keep up with me. So yeah, you've got instant access to files over the network. The other really interesting thing about this is that technically Blackmagic have actually given the ATEM Television Studio HDA ISO cloud store capabilities. And what that means is as well as accessing your files over the local network, if you give your ATEM Television Studio HDA ISO internet access, you can also have it automatically sync your footage up to either Google Drive or Dropbox. And that is incredibly useful if you're working, for example, with remote editors, because as soon as you hit the stop button for the recording on your ATEM, it will instantly start uploading the footage to those cloud services where then your remote editors can start downloading them once they've been fully uploaded. The second feature that I wanna show you is called remote cameras. And when Blackmagic first started talking about this, I was really excited. And then having tested it and used it, I'm even more blown away. So what it is, is inside of the ATEM Television Studio HD8 ISO is eight ATEM streaming bridges. And if you don't know what ATEM streaming bridges are, they basically allow you to receive an RTMP stream 
and then turn those into either an HDMI or an SDI output. But in this case, as they're built in, they just appear automatically as a camera input. So it means you can bring in cameras that aren't connected over HDMI or SDI, but are connected either by a, a local network connection, so over a network cable, or the public internet. So you could have cameras halfway across the world being streamed into the ATEM television studio, appearing on your multi-view and cutting between them. It is really cool and obviously it opens up a world of possibilities for remote production. Now it is worth mentioning that at this time the A10 Television Studio and the A10 Streaming Bridges don't accept just any old RTMP stream. It has to be originating from Blackmagic hardware. So sending a stream from things like an A10 Mini or select Blackmagic cameras like the Ursa Broadcast or the uh, Studio Camera 6K or 4K Pro G2 they all have the Blackmagic encoders built in, which will allow you to then stream to the ATEM Television Studio HDA ISO. You can't though, for example, send a stream from software like OBS or vMix. It just won't show up. Setting up a remote camera is actually really easy. And I'm gonna start in the ATEM software control for the ATEM TVS here. So if we click on the bottom left settings cog here, and then we go over to sources. This is where all our inputs are listed. And you can see we're stuck with SDI at the moment. These drop down boxes are grayed out. And that's just because we haven't set up any remote sources yet. So let's go and do that. We'll click on the remote source setup button down here. And what it first of all gives you down at the bottom here is it lets us know whether our ATEM is being seen on the public internet. Now you might have an error in this internet status box here and that just means that you haven't opened the correct port on your router to be able to allow public internet traffic to flow through to your ATEM TVS. I'm not gonna do a detailed tutorial about how to do that in this video, but if you Google it, there's plenty of information online about how to open certain ports. Once you've done that and you've got it working, if you hit the retry button, it will analyze the connection and then say visible worldwide. And that will mean you can bring in cameras from anywhere in the world into your ATEM television studio. Once that's working, we can now actually add our camera source. So if we click add source here, and I'm gonna give mine a name, I'm actually setting up for a studio camera at 6K Pro. So I'm gonna call it Studio Cam 6K Pro A. And then it would, if I add a second one, it would be B, C, D, etc. Now the code that we have on the right is our stream key. This is unique for each source that you create. If we need to change that, we can click the key icon. And that's pretty much it in terms of creating the source. Now we need to download the actual information that we're going to send to the or, or upload onto the camera so that the camera knows all these details to stream to. So we can just click this little download button here. And I'm going to save that onto my SSD that I've got plugged into my Mac here. And then I'm going to plug that into the camera and import those settings. So that's all saved. Now, a very quick tip that I like to do, you don't have to do it, is if we actually open up that file that's just been saved on the SSD, this is basically the streaming profile that the camera needs so it knows where to stream to. One thing that I personally like to do is I like to change the name here because this is what will appear on the menu in the camera. And I like to change it to something so if I'm using multiple profiles, maybe this camera is actually throughout its lifetime sending to different TV stations, I know which one's which. So I'm gonna call this my home ATEM TVS. Uh, and I'm just gonna put Alex on the end so I know it's mine. Gonna click save on that. Again, you don't need to do this, this step if, uh, you know, if you don't want to, this is just a personal preference for me. With that all saved, I'm now going back to the ATEM software control and I need to assign where I want this camera to appear. So you can see our drop down boxes are no longer grayed out. And I actually want to put this camera, this remote camera into input slot number three. So I'm going to click the drop down list for that. And I'm going to choose that new Studio Camera 6K Pro A in there. And that is all we need to do for our ATEM software control setup. Now we need to just import the settings on the camera and start streaming. Plug your SSD directly into the camera and click on the settings icon in the top right hand corner. Go to the setup page and then scroll through all of the pages until you get to the streaming settings. Click on import settings and select the file we just created and click on import. Then we'll see it appear there. We've got home ATEM TVS Alex. We've got the stream key at the bottom here and we can change the quality that we want to stream in. Also, if you go to the next page, make sure low latency is turned on. 
Then when we're ready, just hit stream on. And you can see it starts streaming with the data rate. Now, if we take a look at the multi-view for the ATEM TVS, you can see that our remote camera is now appearing just below me in the camera three slot. And you will have noticed there is a bit of a slight delay and that's because it is coming in over the network as opposed to a direct connection. So what we're gonna do next is a delay test over both the local LAN and over the public internet so that you can get an idea of what sort of delays you can expect when using remote cameras. To see what the delay is between the two cameras, I'm gonna show a stopwatch on my computer screen here, and I'm just gonna try and eyeball it on the screen, but I can, you can pause it to see exactly what the delay is between the two cameras. So, if we hit start there, I'll make sure it's in screen of both. And as I look over to the screen, that to me looks less than a second. I'd say somewhere around the 700 millisecond mark or so. Now that is the delay over the local network. Let's do a test on what the delay is when the remote camera is going over the public internet. I've now moved the camera outside. It's no longer on my local network. Instead, it is going and broadcasting over the public internet. And to make it even harder, I wanted to make this test as difficult as possible. It's not using a wired connection to the internet. It's actually using my iPhone's 5G connection. So it's about as tough a connection as you're going to get. But yet you can see here on the multi-view, it is stable. I've got an iPad with a timer on it outside and I've actually got my computer again here with a synced timer, so these two are in sync. And we can see if I just eyeball the delay here, wow, it's actually a lot closer than I thought it would be. It's still around the second mark, maybe, maybe slightly under a second, I think, possibly. Uh, we'll freeze the frame and see, and I'll put it on screen, but that is still incredibly impressive. And as you can see, there's no breakups or anything like that. And that's over a 5G connection. So the possibilities that this type of remote camera capabilities opens up is really, really impressive. And I'm looking forward to seeing how people will use it. The final thing I want to mention about the remote camera function is even though your camera might be on the other side of the world, sending its video and audio back via the public internet, it still has a two-way connection with the switcher. So that means the camera is sending back audio and video to the switcher, but the switcher is also sending to the camera ancillary data. So you still get the ability to have a tally light. So when the director cuts to the camera, no matter where you are in the world, the talent and the operator behind the camera still sees the red light. You get camera control and color calibration. So again, a colorist in a completely different country could be controlling that camera no matter where in the world it is and you also get return audio as well now there are a few little tweaks that i would like to see blackmagic bring to the return audio because currently it's just sending back to the camera pure program output and the problem with that is let's say you have a reporter on the other side of the world standing there with a microphone and they've got their headphones plugged into the camera when they speak their audio goes down the microphone and then gets sent back to the switcher but because the switcher is returning pure program output to the camera as well, it means that their microphone audio gets sent back to them with a delay, which is obviously very off-putting. So I'd love for Blackmagic to uh, bring the option for it to be a mix minus of the program output that is returned to that camera so that you'd be able to speak and you wouldn't hear yourself back, but you'd hear the rest of the program audio. The other thing is, you there is talkback included in this as well, but right now it is only one way and that is from the camera to the switcher. So the camera operator can talk to the director and the switcher, but the director has no way of talking back. I don't know if Blackmagic are going to change that. I don't know if that's just a bug, but these things are very new. They've only just been introduced, and Blackmagic have said that they are going to continue to develop them. So hopefully this is a couple of things that we see change in the future. This video is already getting super long and I could talk for hours more about all of the features in the ATEM TVS HD8 ISO. But I want to kind of wrap it up by going back to the start where we were comparing the ATEM SDI Extreme with the TVS model. And so where do I think it makes sense for you to purchase one over the, or the other or to use one or over the other? The ATEM SDI Extreme is obviously incredible in the fact that it is so portable. It is small, it is lightweight, it still is feature packed and feature rich. It's a fantastic device to take or to use if you're gonna be moving a lot from location to location and you, you still need that very powerful switcher. And I think that's where people will probably gravitate more to that switcher in things like smaller setups, but where portability is key, where you can put it in a bag uh, or you can mount it in a little uh, flight case and, and have like something that just opens up as one package where you've got the screen and the ATEM. I've seen a lot of those before. 
But then turning our attention to the ATEM TVS, I think that is where if you can afford the extra money, it is well worth it because you get all of those additional features that I've spoken about in this video and they really do make a difference. But also you get an incredibly powerful all-in-one and I think that's the key here. Whereas with the extreme, you do need a laptop to still do quite a lot of things. You can do most of the things on the front face or actually on the device itself here. And so this is very much, as I said earlier, an all-in-one powerhouse. And it's got all the connectors that you need. It's got everything you need. And I see people using this for things like more permanent setups. So if you're building a mini studio for, let's say, podcasts, for uh, big live events and conferences, where you're not gonna be moving this around too much even though it is still portable and you can put this in a flight case quite easily. But for those more permanent setups, this is gonna be the one that you wanna go for. And I've gotta say, I've used, well, I think I've used every Blackmagic switcher so far that they've come out with. This is easily one of my favorites that they've ever designed. Blackmagic, if you're watching this, bring out a 16, double the number of inputs and hey, Take, the, take those AUX outputs, uh, take those outputs and turn them into AUX outputs. But more importantly, create a 16 input version of this and it will be your bestseller. Just putting it out there. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do click the subscribe button. Make sure you join me here for future videos about tech and broadcast kit. Also, if you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up. It really helps uh, YouTube then suggest the video to other people who might find it useful as well. So I'd appreciate you just taking that if you've made it to the end, just take a second, hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you have any questions about either the ATEM TVS or the ATEM SDI or any other Blackmagic ATEM models or any questions on today's video, put them in the comments below. I read through all of them and will reply to as many of those as possible. And if you need bespoke help on your setup, uh, drop me an email. The email address is on screen now. We can set up a one-to-one -one consulting session with you. Maybe you're looking to build a studio and you've been looking at the ATEM TVS. If you've got questions on it, let me know. Pop me an email. We can book in a one-to-one -one session and get those answered for you. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.